If you believe that Dorper sheep are the best sheep on this planet, watch this video. I bet it will change your mind. Oh man, I know people are going to give me a hard time for this video, but I think that this message really does need to get out there. So there's this reputation that Dorper sheep are the best sheep out there. They're second to none, there's no other sheep in a lot of people's eyes. I've even heard people say that Dorper sheep are the best sheep in the world. Newsflash, they are not. And the reason they're not the best sheep in the world is because there is no best sheep in the world. It's because there are many circumstances. You have different circumstances. Your climate has different circumstances. The Dorper sheep has good uses and it also has drawbacks. And I feel like not enough people are talking about the drawbacks. Before you get any ideas, I love Dorper sheep, obviously, right? I've been raising Dorper sheep. They are really good at putting on meat. They are really good at turning roughage into muscle. They are great mothers, really hardy lambs. Overall, just really attractive sheep. Oh, and did I mention that they taste great? Dorper steaks? Come on. Um, and finally, Dorper sheep over the past few years have been the most registered sheep in the U.S. So clearly, not just me thinks they're great, a lot of you out there also think they're great. And for good reason too. In fact, I did a whole video on why the Dorper sheep are great. So I've been raising Dorper sheep for three years now. And honestly, I don't have any regrets. I think that they've, they've earned the reputation of being um, a good sheep that puts on meat really well good moms, good lambs. But I wanted to share some hard truths for people that maybe aren't into sheep or have thought about the Dorpers that maybe you should be considering because they're not talked about enough. So before I get too far into this video, let me just say um, my sheep are clearing our future chicken run right now. I threw a lot of clover out, so there's plenty of clover and some pesky raspberry bushes that are, that are coming up. Um, so they're mowing it down for us. So if you're like, geez, why do you keep your sheep in this super small, teeny tiny paddock? Um, that's what's going on. They're just here for the day. Okay, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, or rather the worm in the rumen. See what I did there? Uh, parasite hardiness. I, I think really that it is undertold how weak the dorper is on parasites. Now let me put an asterisk there because yes, I know different lines. There's better dorpers than my stock right here. However, I really feel like parasite hardiness is a big concern for some people. I moved my sheep from Utah, which is one of the driest states in the nation, to North Carolina, one of the wettest and hottest states in the nation. And the effects of parasites have, have been very real here. But rather than just complain about Dorper sheep and their parasites, let's, let's talk about why. They come from South Africa. Okay, think about that climate there. Yes, there are some lush parts of South Africa, but you know, mostly arid, desert-like climates. No wonder they did well in Utah. No wonder that they don't have much parasite resistance. And when you think about Dorper sheep and you know the full blood status, which means both the ram and the ewe, or the sire and the dame, can trace their lineage directly back to South Africa with no gaps there. I mean, that's what full blood status means. Pure blood is very similar to that. But full blood implies that there has been no improvement from parasite resistance. And yes, I know epigenetics exists. Epigenetics, uh, if you're new to that subject, is basically just the idea that you can express different aspects of your gene sequences as you develop different environmental circumstances. So, you know, Dorper can, can adapt and pass some of those genes to their offspring. But by and large, the full blood status I mean, on paper, they wouldn't have good parasite resistance because they come from a very arid, parasite-free environment. When you put them in a parasite-ridden environment, like what I'm experiencing here in North Carolina, it's a real thing. In case anyone is curious, these, these lambs are all about three months old. Look at the size of those guys. Okay, but back to parasites. Um, I'd like to just talk, just for, just for a second, share a little story. So I moved my flock with me from Utah, which in hindsight probably was not the best move to do. Would have been better to find a local flock out here, uh, purchase stock from them. Whatever, it happened. I brought four adult sheep with me, and I can't even remember how many lambs, like four or five lambs with me. Of those four adult sheep, I only have one left from my original stock from Utah. It's actually this girl right here with the dot on her head who's got quite a bit of top wool left on her. Um, love that sheep. She's actually our first lamb we ever got. She is the only sheep still with us that has a name. 
but I just want to let that sink in. We we paid thirty five hundred dollars to you know have a professional transport those sheep. We loved our sheep. We've since bought some new stock, obviously, but. Dang, that's a heavy loss, right? 3,500 bucks just to get them out here. And within 12 months, 75% of them are dead from worms. And for those out there that are thinking, well, hey, you know, you probably should have dewormed them. I did deworm them. Um, hey, you probably should have got the vet out. I got the vet out for all four of them. Well, hey, maybe you should be doing more holistic practices. Dude, I do the preventative garlic oil drenches. I do the uh, apple cider vinegar drenches, loads of minerals. Thorvin's kelp, all that stuff. And when I notice from the Fromacha score that they need a chemical deworm, I do that too. Even still, we've had losses. So just want to call that out. Okay, speaking of the cost of things, let's talk about the cost of Dorpers. Dorpers are not a cheap sheep, especially if you want a pure blood or a full blood status sheep, that's going to run up some money. I mean, you're not buying papered sheep for a couple hundred bucks. Okay, like a good you, even outside of a show, is going to run you six, seven, eight hundred dollars, maybe even a thousand dollars, more than that if you're buying them at a show. And and to me, that's too much for a sheep. And hey, I've I've never paid a thousand dollars for you, but I paid a lot for for ewes before. And I just want to call out the notion that like really like what do you get out of a sheep i mean at the end of the day for dorper you're getting not wool you're getting meat out of the sheep and don't get me wrong they do that so well if you're dropping 2500 bucks for you know a trio of sheep maybe that's two ewes and a ram or even if you have a great deal that's three ewes and a ram um for full bloods it's it's going to take a very long time to recoup that and you might say to yourself, well, yeah, all they need is grass. Like, I don't have to, there's no other expenses. Um, you'd be wrong. There are many other expenses besides the, um, the animal itself. So I, w I would like to just say a note on papers versus non-papers. Um, just because a sheep has papers, just because a ewe is full blood status, doesn't automatically mean it's a great sheep. You could have a, a ewe with papers that is not a good ewe. And is overpriced and you could have a commercial you with no papers and she could be a great sheep so i just want to call that out just because an animal has papers doesn't mean it's a it's an amazing sheep don't let don't let somebody take you for a ride uh, just because the animal has papers there's lots of other factors to look for okay one more thing i want to talk about with the dorper sheep is breed consistency so i only have three adult ewes right now and i'll start with this first one um, so my first specimen, this is my favorite kind of dorper, this really thick looking sheep, just this really hardy sheep. That's one of her ewes right next to her. That's a three month old ewe and a twin at that. Like that's a really husky girl. I love these big thick set uh, dorper sheep. And then we've got these other two specimens, which are fine sheep. They're not my favorite version of sheep. If you, if you call her, you know, an A plus sheep, I would say this is kind of like the B minus sheep. Um, that's kind of like the B plus sheep in terms of look and build. Um, you also get dorpers like this that are just tall and lanky. And uh, she's been fine. She's not my favorite you, but you know, like she's doing her thing. My point is she's a full blood. She's a full blood and she is a full blood also. They're all full bloods, but they come in different sizes. So that breed consistency, again, just because you got papers, uh, doesn't mean much unless you go out and check out the sheep and really know what you're getting into. So all that being said, I just want to assert my opinion. Dorper might not be good for very small scale. And when I say small scale, I don't mean starting small scale. I mean, your goal is to end up with three or four ewes. Dorper might not be the best route for that. I think Dorper's use case is on a larger scale. It's on a meat production scale. It's, you know, if you've got 15 to 20 production ewes and you really know what you're doing, you have the time, you have the space, you have good grass, you have a good climate for it. Dorper can actually a absolutely work in those settings. But if you're on a homestead, and especially if you're in a very humid homestead and you only have a couple of sheep, Unless you really know the person you're buying from and you know that stock really well, Dorper might not be the best route for you. You might want something that's a little bit lower input, maybe a St. Croix, um, Painted Desert, Katahdin is like a famous homesteading sheep. So just something to keep in mind. So what's the best breed of sheep? Um, hopefully we've all learned through this process that there is no best breed of sheep. It depends on a lot of factors. I would say when all else fails, when you're trying to figure out what breed of sheep you want, look around at your neighbors. What's their sheep? Because chances are if somebody, you know, 10 miles down the road is making it work, 
you'll be able to make it work at your property too. And you'll have a mentor that's only 10 minutes away. That's pretty nice. We have an absolutely amazing community on this YouTube channel. We have so many people that keep sheep, that keep Dorper, that keep other breeds of sheep. I would love um, if you guys would do me a favor. If you're in the sheep world or you're thinking about getting in the sheep world, please put a comment. What breed do you raise? What circumstances are you under? Is it working for you? I'm trying to add color to this conversation um, with this video. You'd be doing a lot better job if we were to get this whole group to really just kind of chime in on this and start that conversation. Please lend your experience. It helps me and it helps the rest of the community. I know it sounds like I've been dumping on the Dorper breed um, all day, so uh, let me remind you, I have done a video um, check that video out. It was when we were in Utah. Um, I was first getting started on YouTube, first getting started with sheep. Lots of different circumstances there. However, all of it is still true. The Dorper sheep um, have a special place in my heart, and it's for good reason. They're great sheep. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you guys on the next video.